Well, I thought our ball movement was terrific. Uh, 29 assists for the game. Um, obviously, it helps when you make shots. But uh, we did a pretty good job of just finding the next action. We, we didn't get caught too often stagnating or, or, or ball watching. Um, we kept energy in it. And I thought it was great, just spatially. G gave, gave our guys some room to play. Uh, and I, I got to give our guys a lot of credit. Um, AG stepped up. Cassius, you know, out there, made plays beyond the usual. So it, it was really good to see. TB was good. Um, you know, obviously, Coos has, you know, has a triple-double. But um, – we had 29 assists. I think eight guys had at least one assist. You know, had seven guys in double figures. So, by you know all accounts, it's a it's a big time team win. What did you see from the players who kind of had to take on a, a larger role tonight after all the changes? Well, I mean, it's it's unusual. Um, I don't think you know maybe unusual for the duration at which they had to do that. But we've seen uh, Denny initiate offense. Uh, we've seen Kyle do it. Um, you know, so that part I was I was pretty comfortable with. And I think they've, they've done it at times this season. Um, so there's a, a certain feel and a comfort level with it. And I thought they did continue to do a good job with it. You talked um, before a game about, you know, needing it, not asking one person to do it. Yo, it's got to be a team. And that's exactly what you got tonight. Even though the makeup will look a little bit different when the new guys get here, is, is, is this a game that you can use as an example of saying, hey, this is – how we need to be the rest of the way up? Sure. I mean, that was, you know, kind of the, the, the crux of, you know, what we talked about pregame and, you know, right after. It's a good example of that. You know, win or lose, we invested in the process. And if we can continue to play um, close to, uh, to this, and I'm not saying necessarily the 29 assists, but continue with the ball move, uh, we're going to continue to make open shots. But, uh, uh, you know, play for each other. You know, and that was the messaging, R regardless offense, defense, do something for someone else in this locker room. And I thought tonight we did that. Wes, I know, I know you've had a million things in your mind, most particularly this game, but how do you intend to incorporate uh, Porzingis? Uh, you know, it's going to be a work in progress. I mean, his skill set is unique. Uh, his ability to stretch the defense, play off the bounce, his length and size, um, I think he gives you another rim protector. Uh, but he's going to be a nightmare for traditional bigs. He's been that his whole career. Um, so I think it fits well. I think it's going to also open up the floor and allow us to play in space. Um, it's, it's a very unique dynamic. So it's exciting, you know, to, to get a guy like that in the fold. To ask you to project even further out, so it's almost a ridiculous question, how could, could he and Brad complement – how would he and Brad complement each other? Well, you know what, I think um, – the two of those guys playing, you know, two-man game is it's going to be a nightmare. Um, both guys can shoot with range. Both guys can play off the bounce. Um, you know, both guys can handle in, in, in certain situations. So it's a very unique uh, pairing. Uh, I'm not going to compare it to two guys I used to work with, but it, it's it's pretty close. Wes, um Early on, you talked about you would rather have efficiency over pace. Well, Ish Smith is all about pace. Yeah. How does he kind of fit in your scheme of offense? Well, the good thing is I've coached Ish on two other occasions. So I have a very good feel for him, good familiarity. Um, and I think it, it, sometimes what gets lost, you say, all right, well, we, the efficiency part, um, pace is fine, but there has to be accountability in that. Uh, we got to make sure there's ball security. We got to make sure we're organized uh, offensively. We're spatially organized. And, you know, sometimes when you run the ball up the floor, guys aren't in the right spots. Usually those possessions that start bad end bad. So um, it's great that, you know, he, we can initiate, you know, and get our offense going first four or five seconds of the clock. Um, that's good. Obviously, after a miss, let's push, let's play. Uh, I think that's, you know, defend the run is a, is a great thing. Um, but, you know, staying organized. I think that helps lead to your efficiency. Does his ability to push pace kind of open up things for a guy like Gaff that hasn't had as many rim runs or catching stuff off a lob mm -hmm. that can kind of get his offense going also? Sure. I mean, I think it's going to help everybody. Um, you know, TB runs the floor exceptionally well. Gaff does a good job with it. You know, in pick and rolls, he's going to put a lot of pressure on, you know, on bigs. They're going to make a decision of trying to keep him in front or make their way back to, you know, those guys on the rim. Um, I think it's also going to open up the floor for our shooters. 
Uh, as he attacks and gets his feet in the paint, it, uh, it, he's going to collapse the defense. So all those things, I think, are, are, are good aspects for us. Uh, and it generates the types of shots we've talked about. What have you been told about when um, Chris Hubs-Porzingis could be available since he's missed the last five games? Uh, I'm not exactly sure of availability. I believe um, those guys will be in town tomorrow. They have to go through the physicals and that process. But uh, I really don't know as far as you know, when he'll see the court. And what do you think you're getting in Vernon Carey? You know, you know another young, big, and talented. Um, you know, he's got a really good feel, good uh, uh, set of skills. I think he's underrated in that area. Uh, he's got soft touch. He's a, he's a big kid, obviously, still young, still figuring it out. But he's another guy that puts a lot of pressure on the rim. Uh, I think another guy you can play through, um, whether it's in the high post and or, you know, down low. Um, I think his, his size will help protect the rim. But, you know, the combination of the bigs that we have, I I'm really excited to have a young core of bigs that we can kind of mold and, and can come up with us uh, and see how it works out. What did you think of Rui's performance at the five today? I thought it was good. I, it's, it's tough. You know, we have him at five on defense and four on offense. Uh, we'll cross match quite a bit, but uh, um, I thought he did, did a great job. Um, it's not easy because, you know, we're trying to blitz Kyrie, who's a heck of a player. Uh, he's going to put a lot of pressure on you. He's going to press your feet, try to split and beat you to the outside. Um, you know, at times we switched, you know, and played one-on-one. -on -one. So um, his ability to, you know, kind of once again, take what we're trying to do in a timeout or into the quarter and, and apply it on the floor. To see that in real time is, I think, a huge step for us. He didn't play all that much down the stretch. Was that just to give AG time or? No, it was just more, uh, I thought AG um, spatially uh, was doing some good things. Um, you know, really nothing more than I liked what AG was doing out there. Uh, it's a good question. I mean, it's something that we've kind of talked about. We've been trying to figure out for, for quite some time. Uh, you know, he's a dynamic player uh, and, he, and he had a lot of good moments. Uh, we, we just tried to, uh, you know, get him going and keep him aggressive. And when he did that, I thought um, he, he was tough to, he did a, you know, it was tough to keep guys in front and his ability to get down, uh, downhill, attack the paint, it opened the floor up for us early. And, um, you know, everyone benefited from that. So, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, you could say it, it didn't work. And when you look back, you know, the number of games that Brad missed, he missed due to back to backs, and injuries and COVID. Um, we played 50 plus games. Um, I would probably say combined unit, that starting unit probably saw less than 35 of those. So still not a huge sample. Um, so, you know, I, th I think, you know, the moves we made today are positive. They, they, they help bolster what we, uh, what we have. Um, I and mean, hopefully, you know, it works out for Spencer. I mean, Trez as well, we want to wish them well. They, they did a lot of good things for us. Um, so I think that's important to keep that in perspective. Um, this is a tough day for everybody. And it's not just us and it's not just the players, but, you know, every, everyone's affected by that. Um, and it's part of the business. So, you know, you wish them well, we move on and, uh, and hope for the best. Neil. Hey coach, I know you might say it's you know a better question for the players, but could you just sense that you know after the deadline passed, there was just a certain sense of calm amount among the players that were still left, and they were just kind of able to go and play basketball freely. Yeah, I think to some extent, and not unique to just us, probably every team. You know, there's that sense of relief uh, for some guys who who hear have heard their name in, in a lot of chatter, um, and and that's the hard part during this this stretch of you gear up to this day. Um, there's a lot of outside noise. And how do you channel that? How do you focus? Um, keep your mind on, on the task at hand. It's, it's difficult. Um, so, yeah, maybe, maybe it is that. Um, but, you know, you got to get through that. We all know that this day is coming. And uh, the guys that are here, of course, excited to continue to be part of what we're building. Uh, and want to move forward. Thanks, Coach. Wayne. Wayne. Hey, Coach, first, uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on Cassius Winston today. He's been getting uh, very confident, watching with the go-go. He's making great passes on the floor. Just what were your thoughts today from uh, Cassius? 
Well, I thought he was terrific. Uh, he played, really played with some poise, you know, and I know it, he hasn't had a ton of opportunity to, um, you know, play this season you know, due to injuries and, and what have you. But uh, he did a great job keeping us organized, staying in attack mode, picking his spots, you know, when to be aggressive. But uh, I thought he did a great job of just ma maintaining this poise and not getting too rattled. Um, and it was a great, good sign to see. Last week, Coach, like you said today, it was a tough day, but – what were some of the positives of this game you were really proud of? Well, like I said, you know, in the beginning, you know, it was a collective effort, you know, our ball movement, the assist numbers, um, you know, I thought it was great. You know, it's tough when you don't have your full complement, you know, when these type of changes happen quickly, you're trying to do it piecemeal. And, you know, to see guys fill the gaps and, and play together was terrific. Thank you, Coach. Last question to Ken. Yeah, Coach, uh, that 31-19 third quarter, what was the message during halftime to be able to, to come out strong like that in the second half? Well, we just continue to, to move the ball and play the right way, um, honestly. And, and the onus was the first five minutes. You know, let's not have a, a, a situation where we think we can ease our way back into the game. And, and we didn't. You know, I think we, we, we continue to keep pressure on them, um, play with great pace. Um, once again, the ball movement, I thought, helped not only our, our shot selection, but it helped our defense. Um, we were very aggressive, you know, in that third quarter, and it, it went our way. You know, why don't we just start with, uh, you know, the third quarter seemed like it made a big difference for you guys. What was working for you? Um, we knew uh, just going and coming out, like coming out at uh, halftime, we knew uh, exactly what we, we the game plan was, uh, which was try to get the ball out of Kyrie hand as much as possible uh, and just get stops. No, no matter how we got them, you know, get stops. Uh, and our game plan tonight just, just worked. We did it with a lot of effort. And even though we made a lot of mistakes, you know, but we did it with effort and, and it, it counseled out the mistakes that we made. So uh, pretty impressed about what we, how we did tonight. What's your reaction to all the changes that the organization made today, the, the guys that left and the, and the players you brought in? Uh, it was a quick move. You know, I, I didn't, I, I got woken up out of my nap from my wife, you know, just, just hearing it from her. Um, but um, I have no control over that. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't even know what to say about it. You know, um, it's, it's, it's business, I would say. You know, even my name was in that uh, type of trade talk. So um, pretty much used to it. So it's like, I, I I've been in trade talk almost every year. Uh, but, you know, um, the change we did make and the people that we did uh, are, are getting, I feel like it's going to be uh, another level of just, you know, just hard work. You know, the guys, Ish Smith that's coming back. You know, I played with Ish in Detroit. Um, Porzingis, you know, I uh, forget the other guy we have. Um, but them guys are veteran guys. And, and they know how to play and they know and they, they want to win. So and that was, was a great pickup. Appreciate it. Um I feel like that um that inside presence that we that we need, you know, um you know we got bigs right now that that can uh, you know, just screen roll, you know, block shots, you know, get rebounds, you know, get us the uh, the two points that we need in the paint. But Porzingis added uh, a different element. You know, he pop rolls, you know, he can play in the post on mid no, mismatches, you know, and plus he's, what, six, eleven, seven foot? You know, <laughs> he's 7'3", so, like, he, then there's a mismatch everywhere. So, like, and that's that's good for us, you know, um, just to have someone down on the block, that's that's the present, you know, and that's going to take up a lot of attention. Been in this league a long time, so you know about trades that you said before. But why did this not work for a team that started ten and three and tops in the East? So many guys have kind of sat at this podium and talked about the things that were going on. But from your perspective, why did it not work? Uh, I would say, I mean, love. Like, and we all wasn't on the same page. You know, everybody had their own agendas, you know, how, how they wanted to attack <clears throat> uh, this year. 
uh, of, of them playing. You know, a lot of guys wanted, was fighting for minutes. You know, a lot of guys, you know, was complaining about minutes, um, not getting the ball, not touching it. You know, a lot of things was going into, you know, uh, the reason why we you know we we started ten and three. You know, which was great. No one had no agendas. We just wanted to come in, you know, win. Everybody was new, and we was getting to know each other. So we wanted to come in and win. But once everybody started getting comfortable, I feel like a lot of, you know, you know, agendas and uh, I would say egos, you know, took over of, of, of the goal that we wanted. Tell me about the joy. It seemed like you guys played with them. Uh, it was good. You know, before we even came out uh, to start the game, you know, just in the, uh, in the huddle, I could just sense, you know, everybody had a, a different vibe, you know, like the, the energy or like whatever it was, a horror or whatever it was, you know, it was just, it was just different. You know, I could feel it. Like everybody was antsy, you know, they were just, they were just ready, you know, and that's what we needed. You know, we, we want everybody to be ready, but no agendas. There's one agenda out there and that's to get the win. You know, no matter how we get it, you know, just get the dub. You know, and Wes said it uh, before we come out uh, at the film. It's like, I don't care what you do, but do uh, do something for somebody else out there. You know what I'm saying? And we did that tonight, which, which I, I'm very proud. Obviously, the group will be different moving forward, but can you take what you guys did tonight playing as a team? All the other things that you just said, can you build off that and use that going forward? Uh, yeah, that's what we want to build off of. You know, the energy we had tonight, you know, um, just the, the, the toge togetherness that we had, you know, playing for each other, you know, no matter what it was, uh, being positive, like when, when people do mess up, not so much negative. Um, also, Wes said, you know, Coach Wes said, you know, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. You know, be, be, be positive with your teammates, you know, uplift them, you know, so don't bring them down. And I feel like that's, it's going to be a big key, you know, to keeping this uh, consistent and going. Like, just keep everybody uplifted, even when somebody's having a bad game. You know, just keep them going. You know, we've got to continue to do that. Stay within each other. Yeah, yeah this is this, this the Hooper right here. This is the one that got his buckets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You made your first buckets, man. I post you. No, I ain't want to miss your first game. <laughs> it's not actually my first game. Oh, first game for daddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ken. Hey, KCP, what's the difference between uh, the, the, uh, the trade deadline here in D.C. versus the trade deadline in L.A. and even in Detroit? Oh... Uh... I don't think it was any different for me. It wasn't any different, you know. Uh, I didn't hear my name in any trade talks in in Detroit. They just traded me. Uh, <laughs> oh, they they withdraw my they my my qualifier offer. Uh, L.A. I feel like it was every year. You know, I was in a trade talk, even though it it, it probably wasn't going to happen, but it was there. Um, so some of it affected me because. You know, I, I kept going through it, uh, but eventually I kind of like just, you know, had people around me you know, to keep me sane. My family pretty much uh, take my mind off the trade talks and me just not, not really worried about it. You know, if it's happened, it's happened. You know what I'm saying? I, I just take it as this, this business, you know, and business always happens. So, <laughs> uh, but it's been, for me, it just, you know, it's normal. You know, things happen. Yeah, you had the same trade path as uh, as Kuz, and it he had a triple double today. Did you feel that same release of 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 like you know tenseness of stress in Kuz's yeah. game today? Yeah, that's why. I, like when I said it earlier, you know, um, before we came out and run on the court, it was the vibe was just different from everybody. You know, even just walking into the locker room before the game, you know, smiles. You know, everybody just up jolly, um, and I just could feel that, that the vibe was just different. You know, everybody was, you know, wanted wanted something for some for for the next person, and that's the key thing that uh, Wes 
said in pregame, you know, do something for somebody else. And I think everybody out, out tonight, you know, wanted to do something for some of the next person. Neil? Hey, KCP. I'm wondering, just besides just playing against them over the last few years, do you have any kind of known relationship with either Chris Apps or Ish? Ish? Yeah, I, I, Ish is pretty good, close friend. Um, you know, playing with him, playing against him. You know, we always been close. Um, for Zinius, I, I know him. You know, we, we speak, you know, casually when, I, when we do play against each other. Um, but that's about it with, with Porzingis. Uh, but, you know, love it. I love that he's, you know, he's, he's coming here, uh, get to know him a little more uh, on and off the court. So it's, I feel like it's going to be good. And I don't think we've had a chance to talk to you since, you know, Brad had the unfortunate news that he would have to undergo surgery. I guess, what were your initial thoughts on that? And have you been able to reach out to him, you know, since he's been able to get the surgery? Uh, I haven't talked to him since, he, since he's had the surgery. Uh, I figured he would be either asleep or, you know, unconscious. <laughs> so um, I haven't talked to him, but talked to him before he had the, uh, uh, the surgery. You know, um, I didn't really know he was, it was going to happen that quick. Um, but we, you know, decision that he made, you know, I'm just going to be there to support him. Thanks, KCP. Thank you. All right, we got we got one guest question here for Kenzo. Oh, hi, Kenzo. You look so nice up there. I have a question for you. Okay. I just want to know that, I just want to ask you, would you be able to make those crunch time free throws that Dabby made tonight to seal the deal on the win tonight? Do you think you're capable of doing that? Maybe. No, there's no maybe. Yes. Yes. Tell mommy yes. You know, that's mommy, right? <laughs> you know. You can you don't know your mama's voice? Uh, but yeah, that's mommy asked you that question. Do you but, think uh, you could do that, Kenzo? His answer was uh yes. You know, he he's clutch, you know, just like his daddy. Um he said he's ready. He's just a little shy. You know, his first time in front of the camera. I'm not shy. Oh well, damn, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Say it with your chest, baby. You could do it. <laughs> <laughs> thank y'all, thank y'all. <laughs> I know. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yep, thank y'all so much. I'm not shocked. That was not my know. first time on camera. <laughs> Have to start with your first triple-double. Congratulations. Um, Appreciate it. Um, what, what helped you uh, get your first triple-double tonight? Uh, teammates made shots. Uh, <laughs> that's the biggest thing. Um, <clears throat> but no, um, all jokes aside, you know, I know we got a lot of guys out right now, and you know, kind of understanding, you know, um, you know, from a defensive perspective, opposite team, you know, I have eyes. So, you know, just trying to make the right play, and um, you know, when I draw a two, someone's open, just making the right basketball play, try to make it every time down the floor. And, um, you know, it helped us, you know, generate good offense. You know, we had a lot of assists tonight, a lot of great ball movement. The ball didn't stick. And um, it just felt good out there. So, Speaking of uh, your teammates, is uh, Corey Kispert back on your good side now? Um, yeah, he hit a couple, right? Yeah, he hit a couple. Um, so, yeah, appreciate it, Corey. <laughs> Kyle, uh, what, what's your sense of uh, Porzingis and what he could bring to this group? <laughs> Uh, I like KP a lot. You know, um, as soon as the trade went down, I uh, got on the phone with him, and um, you know he's super, super excited. You know, it's a great opportunity for him. Um, I know he's ready, very excited. Uh, you know, and uh, he's he's got a lot of proof too. So, um, you know, obviously, I think a lot of times in, in the in the past, I know playing him, they usually put four men on him, and um, you know, good luck guarding us if you know I got fives on me. So. Um, I think it's phenomenal. I think it's great. You know, if we can allow him to, uh, you know, stay healthy and, and um, you know, get him touches, it would be great for us. Bruce KCP just said the vibe was different tonight. Did you get that sense in the huddle before you guys came out? Uh, yeah, for sure. You know, um, you know, we've been through a, a lot this year. A lot of things uh, have transpired. And, you know, our, our main message um, – prior to the game was, hey, man, you know, we got 30 games left. It just all depends on us 
how we want to finish this season. Um, you know, we can continue to dwell and, and, and point fingers, or we can just come together and uh, play free and, and have a lot of fun out there. And um, as you guys all saw, we had a lot of fun out there. And um, playing for one another, ball movement was great. Um, talking um, defensively, and um, you know, it was just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Smith is a guy that burns a lot of pace through. Yes, a lot. Oh, 1,000%. Um, you know, obviously, I've been in this league a little bit, so familiar with Ish's game. I know uh, he loves to push the pace, and he's one of the quickest point guards, um, you know, in the league. You know, that's always been his rep. So, you know, his ability to get in the paint, touch the paint, spray out, a lot of open looks. Um, and he's a traditional um, pass first point guard. You know, he's, he's someone that really looks to get other guys open, uh, get other guys' touches, and um, can't disrespect him either. You know, he can get down, he can twist you. Um, and he has a nice little mid range too. So, uh, very excited to play with him as well. So, something I've noticed recently about you, it doesn't seem you go out for uh, pregame introductions. You kind of hang out in the tunnel. Why yeah. is that part of your routine? Um, you know, I just, I've always done that. Um, always done that, you know, I, I, I get a lot, I get really nervous uh, before games. Um, it's just natural for me. I've always, my entire life and, um, you know, past two years, I, I, I haven't started. So, um, you know, I've always just been back in the tunnel and just keeping it because it's my, my everyday routine. And um, I just try to keep my game days the same. So um, with all the changes on the roster, it might create an opportunity for some of the younger guys that you, you've talked about kind of mentoring, you know, Denny, Ruby, guys like that. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about the opportunity that they now have? Oh, it was great. I mean, you saw Rudy, um, Denny tonight, you know, played phenomenal. Um, he did a great job playing defense. Obviously, that's what he's do. That's his hallmark. And, um, you know, I think he did a great job just playing simple basketball. You know, he's, he's a very high IQ guy. Um, you know, he makes mistakes, but we all make mistakes. But, you know, you know, when he's out there, he's going to give it his all. And, you know, same thing with Rui. You know, uh, you know, the best thing about that, our situation now, um, he can find his spots. And, you know, for him, he is someone that is a mid-range mid -range player. Um, he does a great job of exploiting mismatches. Uh, mi mi you said it. You got it. I said it. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> got it. Talk too fast. And, um, you know, I think it would be great these next games for him to find a rhythm and, and find his spots and um, contribute to winning basketball. So, Kyle, the team that you guys had up until – 2 p.m. today started with such so well 10 and 3 high expectations and then seemed to unravel why do you think it didn't work out to everyone's hopes uh i mean you know um i don't want to get too much into it but you know at the end of the day uh we started out really well and then we just hit a rough patch and um you know came really um separated if that makes sense and, um, you know, it, it was a tough couple of months for us, but at the end of the day, that's, that's past us and all we have is tomorrow. And, um, you know, I'm really excited to go forward with the group that we have and uh, the incomplete, incoming players that we have as well. So, um, you know, that's all I can really say, so. <laughs> Neil? Yeah. Hey, Kyle, I'm curious, just what prior relationship uh, have you had with Chris Stops before? You know, you don't necessarily see someone, you know, able to just immediately call somebody up as soon as the news breaks and, you know, have a conversation with them. Is that because you guys are, you know, somewhat known to each other? Uh, no, I never talked to him before ever. I just uh, got his number from a friend and um, just hit him. You know, that's the type of person I am. I'm a very welcoming person from the Midwest. And, you know, this is our hospitality. So. Um, you know, obviously I, I've had a couple of teammates that's, that's been his friend or a couple of teammates that's, you know, played with him and, um, I know the coaching staff, so it was easy to get in contract, uh, contact with him. Thanks, Goose. Nice outfit. And. Hey, Kuz, uh, what was the difference between your headspace today before 3 PM versus, you know, previous years in LA? before the trade deadline? 
Oh, uh, man. I knew I wasn't going nowhere. I tell you that. You know, uh, my, <laughs> my first four years in the league, I was always in trade talks and trade rumors. You know, that's just how it is in, in um, you know, big markets and, you know, being an asset. So, um, you know, I slept well. Um, you know, I knew it was a real anxious time around here, obviously, being through it and having young guys that have always been in trade talks here in, in the past couple months. But, um, you know, I'm just glad it's over. I'm really happy for the guys that are here and, um, you know, they can really just, you know, ease their mind and just play basketball. You know, that's the most important thing right now. Um, you know, we just want to have fun and uh, just try to collect W's because uh, we haven't had much of that this year. And also, um, at the end of the third quarter, you had double-digit points, double-digit rebounds, nine assists. What was on your mind coming into the floor with the uh, triple-double watch? I mean, I knew I had nine, but uh, I was just trying to make the right play, honestly. Uh, really not trying to downplay it, but, um, you know, I, I just tried to be aggressive, find open man, and, um, you know, try to get the win. That was the most important thing. You know, nobody wants to triple-double when you lose. That sucks. That's good. Last question of Wayne. Hey, first off, congrats on the triple double coups. Uh, with a total team win like this, uh, what were you most proud of tonight? Uh, Anthony Gill. So I'm most proud of a uh, guy that never really plays for us. He is the most optimistic, positive person. Um, you know, one of the best teammates I've probably been around. So really, really happy for him. You know, he's a very smart guy, a uh, smart player. Just does all the uh, dirty work, never complains, and uh, he's a great guy to have around. I was happy for him, you know, having 14 and you know making crucial plays for us.